Okay. So getting outside your comfort zone is one of the most powerful and fastest ways for you to accelerate your results. That makes sense, right? When you just go out and call somebody or do something you're not comfortable with, it's a, it, you know, it, it makes th new things happen. So, so this is one of the, the two most powerful si the, uh, uh, principles, and now we're going to show you the, the next one. It's called Utilize the Power of Leverage, principle number five. Now, let's first of all define leverage. What is leverage? I say leverage is getting more output or results with the same amount of input. Right? So you put a lever under something, and I can lift, you know, if I'm pushing up on something 100 pounds of my, my weight, I can only move it so far, but, or maybe not at all, but if I step back and have a longer lever, I can, I can do it, right? I can use leverage so I, get, I can get more results with less effort. That's what leverage basically is. It's one of the simplest and most powerful ways for you to move ahead in your business, and it's almost always one of the ones that everybody overlooks. So it's a, it's a new opportunity for you to start looking for. So, and, and most small business owners don't even understand the concept of leverage, so we're going to give you a quick lesson in it. Um, let's, let's look at an example. 1984, Oprah Winfrey began a talk show in Chicago. She was an employee of the, of the uh, ra uh, TV station, and she started doing this talk show. 1986, two, just over two years later, it was syndicated nationally. What do you think happened to Oprah's income in that time? It went up. Oprah went from being an employee, just like a clerk that works at the city hall or whatever, but just, you know, having a job. She, you know what her net worth is today? Three billion is the current estimate, that's right. Three billion dollars, that's a lot of zeros. How did it happen? Only due to the power of leverage. And what's crazy about it is that she was still doing the same show. She was still herself, right? She didn't magically develop new skills or arms or legs or anything. She was just being herself, bringing on her guests, but it was expanded out to a larger audience and therefore meant brought in 10 times, a hundred times, a thousand times the amount of money that it did before because it was leveraged. That's what you want to look for. So how do you do it? And by the way, I'll give you another example of leverage. You're talking about Oprah. Um, how many have written a book in this room? Anyone? Yeah. If you've written a book, how would you like to have that be one of Oprah's book club choices? Talk about leverage for an author. Just one mention from, from her and your whole run sells out like that. Right? That's an example of leverage. So, in the first case, she was leveraging her own resources and going out. In the second way, in second way, you would be leveraging her resource of all these people. So you can, what we want to look at is, first of all, what are the resources you have at your disposal? And, and there, there'll, be res uh, there'll be your resources and the resources of others. And then the second thing we want to do is look for creative ways to leverage the resources that you have at your disposal, whether they're yours or not. So I'll give you some examples. First of all, your resources. Let's take a look at them. Time. How can you leverage your own time? So leveraging your time would mean getting more done with less. How about doing a conference call instead of talking to people one-on-one, -on -one, or creating a video that I introduces people to your product or gets them started in using it, a, an instructional video or something like that. That's a, a way that you leverage your time, yes? So that's one way. Anybody think of another example of leveraging time? Writing a book, even, is leveraging your time. You're getting your information out over and over again with, with just one writing of it. So leveraging your time, and again, when you start to get, start to think creatively about these things, they'll start to pop in your head, and you want to be, want to be um, thinking about them. So, second thing you can leverage is your money. Right. So, we see how many have made uh, made investments, and they've done well. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. So that's leveraging your money it, when you when you buy something. You, you can actually leverage your money even when you buy advertising in a way. You're buying, you're using your money to get you more customers. 
So you can leverage your money. Third thing you can leverage, your contacts and relationships. How many of you are in a business where getting referrals is important to you? Yes? A referral is simply one of your, you know, uh, one of your contacts, somebody you know, introducing you to somebody else. It's a way, and if you're, if you're good at it, if you build the right kind of relationships and you naturally develop your centers of influence, which is a whole other talk that I do around how to develop your centers of influence so that they will give you referrals. And so it's your network, you, it's your relationships that you build. How did I get to be in this room today? Because I know Dan and DJ really well, and it turns out that they couldn't be here tonight. So they wanted somebody that they knew and trusted to be in the room and to kind of make sure that things were in, in good order. They've, all, they've both in lots of seminars that I've led. Oh, Andrew, would you be there tonight to take care of things? They leveraged me and their relationship with me to have me here. Does that make sense? Um, so your, co your contacts, so you want to be strategically developing your contacts. Okay, again, now we're gonna, all these things fit together. You want to be prioritizing. You want to go through, make a list of all your contacts and then identify who are the top five I want to develop relationships with. Not just anybody in here that says, let's get together for coffee. They may be a nice, pers nice person, but in terms of prioritizing your activities and your actions, you want to spend your time developing relationships with people that can take you where you want to get to. Make sense? So you're going to put that together with, with building your contacts and, and your relationships. Um, I'll give you another example of, of, the, um, of relationships. When I first got my Master Certified Coach um, designation in 1999, I, um, you know, I, coaching was still a brand new thing. And I only knew one other coach in Vancouver who was really successful. Like the, I was making a six-figure income in 1999. Almost no, well, almost no coaches make a six-figure income today, but, but back then, like, nobody was. And my friend, Teresa LaRock, who lives over in, in, uh, in Vancouver, she um, uh, gave me a call, you know her, right? And um, she gave me a call and said, Andrew, I'm building a mastermind group of people that are earning, the of coaches that are earning six figures. Are you earning six figures? And I went, yeah. She said, we're putting this together, this mastermind group. There's gonna be nine people, and they're gonna be all across North America, and we're gonna have a call every week. Are you interested in joining it? Well, what do you think? Right? I've been struggling to get myself to a six-figure income, and I knew that anybody else had, but as a coach earning that that would have done the same. So she created this mastermind group. She invited me to it, and we met on a weekly basis on the phone for about an hour, and then eventually we started getting together, together in person twice a year. Everybody flew in from Atlanta and California and all this stuff, and uh, we went to Whistler one time, rented a big chalet there. And sh everybody shared their, their complete business model. They, they got kind of opened the kimono on everything. It was amazing. So yes, I shared my secrets, but I got secrets from, nine, from eight other people back, right? And um, so the mastermind group was, was absolutely fantastic. And it's one of the things I strongly recommend for, uh, for all of you is to be part of, uh, part of a group like that. We called it the um, Cloud Nine Mastermind. And it was... Um, it was probably one of the most important keys to me developing my business the way I have and becoming the person I have in, 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 in terms of this industry. So you want to, you don't, you, your people don't have to necessarily be in the same industry, but I strongly encourage that you, you to be in a mastermind group of between five and ten people, not less and not more. And you want to meet on a regular basis, at least once a month. And, and you know, you have to have a structure to make sure that you stay focused. Very, very powerful concept. Does that make sense? So that's another way you can both um, leverage your contacts and, and relationships and also strengthen them. Because once you've been in a mastermind with somebody, you get to know each other so amazingly well. I mean, I could go and stay with anyone from that group, even though I haven't been in the group for almost 10 years now. And, you know, they, they're still, they're just, you know, your bosom buddies with them for life. You get to really know them. So, so that's another thing you can leverage.